An empty can of cheese whiz. Cheese was. Listen, if you tune in for anything serious, you're probably in the wrong channel. So today, what does I want to do? Uh, I've gotten a lot of knives recently just because of the holidays, you know, gifts or trades or, or whatever. And uh, most of them either I have reviewed or they have been reviewed to death or it's just a different variant of something that I've already reviewed anyways. So I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. And that was the point of this channel anyways, was just to talk about knives. It doesn't always have to be some format for, forward review. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about them. If you got any questions, put them down in the comments and uh, we'll go from there. So... The first one uh, was actually a gift from a dude, Tyler. He got a couple of these and uh, knew that I was after one. Um, but also the conversation came up about frame locks and how I had avoided frame locks for so long because the ones that I had, I would always fight with on the backside here when I tried to deploy it. So this is the uh, QSP Penguin. However, it is the upgraded, you know, 154 CM on a blade steel and a titanium frame lock. And I can go ahead and say that this, you know, it's always opinion, right? This is opinion. This is the best iteration of this thing. It's absolutely fantastic. It's substantial in your hand. It's got enough weight, but it's thin. Uh, I've always liked the blade shape of this. I have had the uh, standard one, like the $30 one with D2 and just my card. And I thought that was cool, uh, but it wasn't just worth keeping around where this makes this knife uh, so much more unique and uh, just something to kind of hang on to. But the point, again, was what I was going back to, the frame lock, I always fought with a frame lock, and I think, I was, I was telling Tyler, was like, I think the problem was I was I had junk frame locks. You know, the tension wasn't right or whatever that looks like, where if you just put a little bit of pressure back here, you know, you get caught trying to open it because you're pushing on the lock itself. Uh, well, this, I can tell you, Definitely changed my mind. Now, when I say the first frame locks I had were like Kershaw's and stuff like that, and you know, like 30 bucks, and I just got so annoyed because you know, like the pocket clip was laying on the frame or whatever that looked like, and it was just a bad design. Uh, so I have recently gotten the um, the line, the titanium frame lock uh, S35 Kaiser line. There's several models in that line, but I, I've gotten a handful of them. And all of them function perfectly. And he said, well, you should really try this. And so he sent this one to me. And he's absolutely right. This this really is. This works phenomenally. There's no issues whatsoever with putting any pressure. I mean, I can literally just put my fingers right on there. And it still opens up perfectly fine. I mean, you really have to, honestly, if you want to try to slow roll it, you, you know, I always put my finger up top here. So it just sort of catches it. And then I can open up because the slightest bit of use on that thing, the slightest bit of pressure, and it just flies out. Even... Uh, you know, flicking it from like the reverse dial, it's it's terrific. You can just get your meat of your finger right there on it, and there's no wrist action or anything. It just comes right out. So um, this knife is super cool to me, and um, again, but it's it's had a lot of reviews, and um, I just think it's really cool. So QSP Penguin, the CJRB Scoria. So this also uh, Tyler was selling this. And then in a kind of secret Santa form, uh, somebody reached out to him and knew that I wanted it and paid for it. And uh, that was really cool. Now, Ty already had this for a really low price. Uh, I think these are normally like 70 bucks. And he had it for like 45 bucks. Uh, so I was probably going to buy it, um, but somebody already took it out from underneath me and bought it and then sent it to me. And so I think that's, that's just really cool. Um, that's such a theme over and over again with this knife community is just sort of the generosity that gets passed around, you know? Uh, so this is really cool. This, I, I have always liked this knife, uh, that different steel that they came out with, which is, um, a powder form of like nine CR 18. And I think that's super cool. You know, I always liked nine CR anyways. And so just to have a little bit more, they, they say it performs like D2, uh, but stainless and that's fine with me. I was fine with D2 the way it was. I've only seen reviews on it. This is the first knife I've ever had that has had this steel. So we'll see. But aside from that, I just always love this, the overall shape and design of this. This is just a very standard, you know, when you think of a knife or like a kid draws a knife, like this is basically what it looks like for the blade shape uh, and then just a handle sticking out. And, and I think that's terrific. You know, I always look for uh, knives that are 
just very neutral in their handle. I think that's just kind of what I like anymore. You know, just a little bit of suggestion here where to put your finger is, is enough for me. Uh, this is a extremely generous forward finger choil. Uh, flipper tab, you know, this, look, this is one I know. I, I've been done just a, a complete hater on flipper tabs and I'll bring a knife up later that shows that I'm not a hater of flipper tabs. I'm a hater of tabs that are this enormous like that is too much look here's where's my bra okay here's my brazen look the savivi brazen look at the flipper tab difference even if i just lay these over top of each other look how much more like how much farther that sticks out you know that's this is fine to me i don't i'm not going to do anything with this flipper at all it's not it doesn't hit me that's where i get annoyed when it hits me like on my finger see where it falls right in there and the fat on my finger, like, that's fine. I can open that up and close it perfectly fine. And, yeah, it's a perfectly usable uh, flipper. That's great. So I don't have a problem with this at all. But, yeah, look, this, I just, that needs to go. It really does. This would be so much cooler. And you can still perfectly use that forward finger choil. This is enough of a well right here. You know, enough to suggest a well. You can be right back here or you can choke up if you want to. That's, I don't know. It just annoys me. I know that's all personal. I get too far off into that because that's just a personal nonsense. But I'm just talking. It's like, you ever, guys ever watch Pete? Um, Jersey Knife Guy? I think that's what his title is. <laughs> Sorry, I can't remember Pete. Uh, I just know him by Pete anymore. But that dude just starts talking. And that's what I'm feeling like I'm going to do today. Just start talking. But see that? That's so annoying to me that it clips you. And the same thing when you go to close it. You know, it hits your finger so early. I And I get these are all... And then it hits you back here too. I don't know, that's too annoying to me. And you could just bring it down. There's no jimping on this thing. You probably bring it down. I don't know. Anyways, that's enough of a tangent for that thing. Uh, again, actually bringing back to Pete. He's a big fan of these pocket clips, the like milled titanium clips. And once I got it in hand and use it, you know what? I kind of, I had argued with him before in the past because I like the standard like stamped loop over deep carry clip or a wire clip is actually my favorite. Um, but this does look cool uh, once I've got it in hand now. I, I I was kind of against it at first, but honestly, it sort of fits this knife. Everything else is nice and sleek, you know? Um, so it's pretty cool, though. It's a pretty cool knife, so I'm glad to have that in the collection as well. Uh, oh, on loan, this is Tyler's as well. This is the first time I've gotten to mess with the sheepdog and specifically this thumb hole one, which is the one I would absolutely pick, you know, going back to the flipper tab, not having a flipper tab out here. This is amazing. I am so impressed and so shocked by how well this carries in your pocket and the functionality of it and the action on it. Like, holy cow, I was... I was just absolutely amazed. It's not a, it's not a weak detent. It's not a soft detent. It's it's literally, it's just right, you know. And this handle shape is beautiful. It's super comfortable in hand. You know, even if you want to choke up, there's that nice generous flat spot right there. If you're gonna, you know, do anything with the heel of the blade and really kind of bear down on something. I I had thought I asked Tyler. It's the reason why he uh, loaned this to me. How well it did carry and how well it worked. He had put a put it in one of his videos. Um, I think something to do with top knives. I can't remember which one it was. And this was in there. And I, I said, you know, I really need to borrow that. But I was, because I was always worried if you guys, if anybody out there has ever carried or had the, uh, like the shredders loaned me the off grid black stallion. And that thing, that is a pocket tank. And I was concerned. I thought this was going to feel like that. And I can tell you not in the slightest that that uh, black stallion was just a very overbuilt knife and that's what they off-grid labels it as so that's cool um it was a fun knife but this is extremely practical i was shocked at how practical this was and honestly i had i was actually at a dinner um like an event uh for my work and i had this with me and you know some of the guys there know i'm in the knives like oh what knife do you bring today and i got this out and then it was like a 30 minute conversation on this thing about these are non-knife guys talking to me about knives. And uh, they all liked it a lot, too. It's 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 pretty cool. So, very cool knife. Just to have it on loan. I'm going to have to buy one, though. I know it. Yo! What? Look, I forgot to put this in the video. So, we're going to splice it and put it in right there. Um, I passed 500 subs a while back. So, that's super cool. 
and uh, that means a giveaway. So I already have everything together. I had a terrific donation even, um, and that ties in with everything I already have really well, to be honest. So be on the lookout for that video. It's, it's honestly just probably gonna be my next video, but I'm not gonna put giveaway in the title at all. That way it sort of promotes it more to the people that already watch the videos. It's just the way I wanna do stuff. Um, last thing is I don't have one of those arm stick things. It's just my arm. And this is a weird optical illusion that makes it looks like I'm taller than everything in my house. And I'm not, it's a regular height thing. Uh, other than that, have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the video. So speaking about flipper knives, look, this is one that I cannot complain about one bit. All right, and I can say this, I'm not a hater of flipper tabs, but I don't want them to be enormous, as I just talked about. And like, if this had thumb suds, then I would be a hater of this flipper tab because I just want one solid method of deployment. Again, that's just opinion. And I know that I'm, I'm more than likely in the uh, minority when I talk about that. Uh, but this is the off-grid Scorpion. Uh, version one from what I can read up on and, and the reviews I've watched because I'm really not familiar with off-grid as much. I've had a few knives on loan. I've, you know, paid attention to some of their models. A lot of their stuff is just, you know, big, heavy built stuff. This is definitely built heavy, uh, but it's slim enough that I, I really did fall in love with it after uh, kind of handling it. I just picked this up last weekend. So again, this should be version one from whatever I, what I can see. This is like their more simplified logo on version two. Uh, it has their more overdone logo, same with the pocket clip there, as well as this is uh, S35, the version two, yeah, version two has M390. This one is we produced, and then they switched over to Best Tech, I believe. That's just what I can read to find out on it. Uh, Bob means correct me if I'm wrong on the whole of version one, version two. That's, I'm fine with, you know, learning more about the knife I own now, uh, but... I was so impressed with this. And this is again, that liner or a frame lock conversation where another frame lock where, you know what, it's so well, I can put my fingers wherever I want to on this. I don't have to worry about it. And no matter what it deploys and just this honestly has broken in just, I've carried this like three days. What did I say? Wednesday, two days. I carried it two days uh, and just flipped it a whole bunch. And the lock has broken in now. It honestly had a little bit I was really pushing hard to get it to um, unlock. Now it's just super smooth. And that, I'll stop talking because that sound, that is so satisfying. It's very clacky. And uh, I think that's super cool, you know. Um, so for them, this S35, I don't know if I said this right, titanium with actual carbon fiber inside of there, uh, I believe. It doesn't look like it's just a sticker laying in there. If it, You know what, if it is, I don't really care. Um, but I'm just saying it looks good and it looks cool and I'm glad to have it. It fits my hands really nice. You know, it's, it, this is unnecessarily big for what I normally need anything for, but I've used it a few times and I thought, oh man, this is definitely it. This is a, just a keeper knife. I really do like this a lot. I was shocked, you know, again, I don't pick up too many flipper only knives. Um, but I like this one. I like it a lot. It's super cool. Uh, let's see. Oh. This was a trade, got this guy in. I wanted this knife so bad uh, since it was released, in all honesty. I just wanted to be able to get a hold of this, the Giant Mouse Ace Grand. This overall almost encompasses everything that I love about a knife. It's the perfect size, thickness, you know, contoured not too much. I don't like overly contoured. Uh, wire pocket clip, you know, LMAX steel, which I will... Never use that to its fullest potential. I'm very, you know, honest about the fact that I mostly cut open boxes and uh, whatever else I needed to. I'm not shy about using my knives, but I don't have a huge, you know, I'm not hard. I'm not a hard use on, on any of my knives, really. Um, but this is one that if I had with me, I'm not afraid to do anything with it at all. Uh, that steel is far beyond, you know, what I need it to be. But the ergonomics are terrific. The blade shape I love. This is such a winner to me and I wish more people do. I don't know, I doubt they have a patent on this or something. Maybe they do, I don't know. But putting the jimping up here where it's useful is such a a almost novel idea around, you know what I mean? It's like, it's so simple. Why don't we all just do that? You know, most of them are clear back here. 
you know, which it does work, but this is when I stretch out, that's where I want my thumb to be, right there, right where the jimping is. It, it's perfect. Uh, crowned over on the spine as well. Just a beauty. Now, one thing I guess I can knock, and I'm not going to mess with it though, I don't think, and a lot of people have said that the lock bar access, if I lay that perfectly flat, you barely get any access to it. But it's it's enough. You know, I got to use my fingernail. You can see where it kind of dents in right there. I got to kind of use my fingernail and, and uh, push in with it on that. And if you get right up here by the blade, that's the best place for it. You know, easiest to disengage it, and that's fine. It doesn't matter to me, but... Other than that, this is uh, this is such a cool knife to have and uh, something I really wanted in my collection for a long time. Uh, oh, this one, if Cole watches any of my videos, Cole of Tri-State EDC, uh, you know, also Ohio and here, we're about three hours apart. Uh, I won this on his, I believe it was the Knife Rights when they were doing all that uh, 24 hour or 12, whatever that was, all that stuff. I watched Cole's and I won this on his, uh, this is one of the Kubis, and I will flash the number up here because I can never remember what they are. I have been a fan of Kubi for a long time. I don't buy a ton of their knives. It's kind of like anything else where, you know, maybe get one or two, but they're always so good. I had um, two of two different Drakes because I, you know, I had the original one and, and it was really, really nice, and then I sold it. You know what? I've had three different Drakes, Kubi Drakes. Um, thinking about that because I won one and that got me hooked on it and then I, I'd given one away and so on. But anyways, uh, I was such a fan of those. And so this knife, I think, is just, once again, that like classic standard, you know, this is a knife blade. It's not anything crazy uh, is what I mean by that. So good pointy blade on it. And then this is very, I don't know, kind of uh, Strider-ish looking on the handle. And but it works really well. Now the reason again, if Cole watches this, he's already disappointed. I just showed you know you can see. I look the front flipper on this thing was just horribly obtrusive. And I'll I'll again put another picture up here real quick of the close up of the front flipper. It was so far up and just very you know unicorn horn like, and I just couldn't stand it. And not to mention it was it really. For me, it was extremely stiff to try to get that thing to actually, I had to really give it a good, good hit. Uh, and it's just another one of those things, you know, like I, this thumb slot is beautiful and works perfectly fine. So, you know, why not just keep that? And uh, it works terrifically. So that's what this is now. And to me, now this looks a lot better. And I could have laid that out a little bit more flat, but I actually liked the, I just rounded it off nicely, and yeah, you can see I missed just a little bit. That annoys me right there where I came down on the jimping because I had it perfectly where it was. It looked like it was supposed to be there, but it came out really, really smooth, uh, and that's all, if anybody had any questions, I mean, a very simple process. Drum sanders, different grits all the way down, and then some hand polishing to smooth it off, but not that that's anything magical. The point is, now I think this knife, this silhouette looks really great, and it's just perfect in hand, you know. Even back here, didn't, it's not like I lost anything on the on the jimping or whatever. Jimping comes up plenty far. Um, it's just super cool, super cool knife. Uh, what else? Oh, this one I just got this weekend as well. Uh, so this is my first Tucson, and it's honestly because a lot of their stuff, and this is no different, is very, like, futuristic, cyborgish. You know, just kind of, uh, it reminds me of um, Isham Designs. You know, a lot of his stuff is that way. And I'm just not into that. Uh, so this one is a little like that. You know, with the extra line of holes right here. And the blade shape is not crazy, though, to me. It's not crazy. And once I opened it and realized, like, you know, how these holes kind of line up, I'm like, you know what? This is a pretty cool knife. Uh, as well as, as you can see, it is just a front flipper only. And I... And it's what I was complaining about with this one, where it's this giant horn. This doesn't have that. And I'm like, oh, that actually looks really cool. And then I finally flipped it, and it works really well. You know, I was like, oh, that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, like, I don't have to do anything crazy. It just flips super nice. I mean, you can just slow roll it if you want to. Very easy. I've seen people do, like, the, when you do it like this, and you can do that as well. It's a little harder for me. Kind of got to give it some wrist action, but like just doing that and it flips right open. I think that's super cool, you know? So I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to pick that one up as well. Uh, another frame lock. 
but they have this beautiful, this is titanium micarta inlays inside of there, which I thought also looked really cool. Um, kind of standard to what Tucson does that I've noticed before where they do this kind of higher end stuff here and then give you a good, it's a budget steel. It really is, but it's a good budget steel. This is a 14C28N. So, you know, I think this knife's like a hundred bucks, uh, roughly. And, you know, I don't know, you go back and forth, uh, you, because you get such high end stuff here and then like a budget steel. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but I like it. I like it enough. I probably had flipped this knife while I was talking to the dealer, uh, at the show. I probably just flipped this knife. I don't know, a good 50 times. And finally, we had been talking all the time, uh, and I always go to these these gun and knife shows with my dad. And he walked up and seen me doing it. He goes, "You gonna buy that or not?" <laughs> so, yeah, that's you know, I got it. So I'll take it home. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The number on these again, I don't hear. I'll put them up right here for you. I don't. I don't remember. TS something or other. Uh, lastly, I think yeah. Lastly, is this combination. Now I put up a few pictures on Instagram of this thing, and even did a poll whether I should switch the stuff around or not. So the Spyderco Indela is hands down now my favorite Spyderco. It was the Native 5 for a long time, and I think the Native 5 is really cool. I just don't have one anymore, and I don't see myself buying one, especially now that I have this. Um, so I've had the original one, which was this stainless hardware with these black handles on it. That's the $80 one, which is VG10. Um, that's what this blade is. And so over Christmas, I got the, this is the DLT trading. They have the 20 CV blade and then this like infected, I think it's called Zom or Zom or however you say that. I just call it infected. It looks, you know, all splotchy and stuff like that, red with black spots. And I'm not really like, I didn't really care for that too much. It's okay. Uh, but I had the idea of just, my original intention was to completely swap all this around to make a total uh, black Indela. And then I, but I really, I did one last thing and that's, I kept the little splotchy backspacer because I honestly thought that looked kind of cool. Just enough of a red to kind of give it a little hint, you know what I mean? Of just something a little different. Uh, so now I have this that uh, my buddy doesn't know yet, but I'm going to give this to him. I don't know how long ago, 10 years, five years ago, something like that. I gave him a uh, bird Kara Kara and that's like his favorite knife. He loves that knife. So I want him to see what the step up is like, you know what I mean? And I've given him some other knives since then, but he loves that bird knife so much that I want him to see the next level up, you know what I mean? So I'll probably give him that. Uh, and then I'm going to absolutely keep this. So now I have, you know, an almost all black uh, Andela with 20 CV blade steel that works amazingly and is now my absolute favorite uh, Andela, favorite Spyderco rather. So I just, I don't know. I think it's all cool. So that's it, really. That's enough talking. That's going to be a long video. Longer than what I'd normally do, but you know what? I don't know. I just I just want to talk about knives anyways, and that's what we do. That's why I said I took kind of a page out of uh, Pete. If you're going to watch this, buddy, I took a page out of your book just to bring them all back out. Uh, I took a page out of your book, though, and just wanted to talk about knives in general. I don't know if they're all going to fit on the screen. So, you know, I don't know. Are there any questions about any of this stuff? You know, certainly leave them down in the comments uh, or whatever if you want to even argue about me getting rid of flipper tabs as much as what I do. Uh, that's cool too. It doesn't really matter. Oh, this one doesn't really fit, does it? There, just go like that. Just so I can end the video. There you go. Pretty cool stuff. I'll have to figure out a thumbnail for it. Um, you know what? Times are still tough, aren't they? I think it's still a little awkward being out in public and everything else. So um, do your best though, you know, put on a smile and just enjoy yourself, you know, and spread some, spread some positivity. You know, I, I still say, my kids still say that if you've been paying attention uh, they still do every single morning when they go to school. I'm not kidding. Even though I'll forget and they do this, you know, we pr promote positivity. We're slam our thumbs together and we pump up the positivity and uh, they love doing that. And you know what? If it makes them smile, then so be it. So, you know, you guys do it too, really. Just promote some positivity and, and enjoy life. All right, everybody, take care.